Tim Burchett's a friend of mine, which I'm kind of shocked by this. And Tim Burchett, in his quote, said, he's leaning towards no, he's on CNN, but I'm going to pray about it. I said, Tim, um, I read your quote. You said you're going to pray about it. I want to talk to you about it. And somehow he construes that I'm a Christian. I'm not going to offend somebody. For I simply read his quote back. I thought there was still an opening, and I wanted to talk to him about it. All right, uh, now to get the congressman's view of that, Tim Burchett uh, is the House Oversight uh, Committee member, House Foreign Affairs, the Republican, uh, to, to sort of weigh in on all of this. Congressman, you were among those eight who voted against the speaker. Uh, he was surprised. Uh, how did that conversation go? I don't know that he was surprised or not. I've been vocally opposed to our fiscal situation for a long and thank you Mr. Cavuto for having me on I've been a long time fan of your thank common you. sense approach to economics but no I just I've made it pretty clear you know we take in five trillion dollars a year we spend seven trillion dollars a year the solution in Washington is another continuation budget it's like telling a crackhead I'm going to give you more crack to get you off a of crack you know they told us let's pass this one Burchett and then we won't pass another one so we won't have to pass another one I've been we've been doing that for five years and guess what every time another continuation budget and this one the 45 day one backed up right against the Thanksgiving holiday by no mistake 45 day and here we are on day 41 and guess what we've never had a meeting on it yesterday you know on Monday or Tuesday we, we rushed to the house floor to name a to name a post office you know there's no urgency I think that proved my case um, as far as the comment about the prayer it was a condescending comment he made and then he went into and I said well, what about um, term limits? And he blamed that on the committee. And I said, well, why were we here six weeks? Why were we in, at home for six weeks? August, you know, September 30th, as you know, it comes around about this time every year. And yet there we were, August, we're out August. We know that. But then we took two weeks in September. But that was and the killer for you, right? I've heard that from some of your colleagues who also voted no, Congressman, that um, if, if, if the party was going to be serious about dealing with this and staving off the shutdown, uh, they would have, you would have all been there for those six weeks, and that added, you know, the two weeks as well. 100%. And, you were, and that was the, the deal killer. Um, yes, sir. It, uh, now I got to ask you about the fallout for you. I had Congresswoman Nancy Mace a little earlier yeah. that she is being, she says, I have no proof of this, that being ostracized, sure. a key committee that she was on, uh, or at least a governance group she sure. is off of or told she will be off of. What about you? Well, the, a lot of my key folks in my district that, that are big contributors of mine, um, you know, and they're close with, with Speaker McCarthy, and I received the calls. I received calls from some of them while I was on the floor. And, um, you know, and that's, that's I've been in this game a long time. I fully intended that I, when I voted. Um, and knowing that would happen, I know I'd get primary opposition. I might be taken out, but we're going to lose our country. I don't. You don't know anything about my, my history, but... You know, my daddy fought in the Pacific. My mama lost a brother uh, fighting the Nazis. She actually flew an airplane during the Second World War. They made incredible sacrifices so their little baby boy could be a United States congressman, earn $170,000 a year for rarely hit, hitting a lick up here, honestly. And it's very disgusting to me that we tell the American public that we're making sacrifices being up here. And I hear these guys get up and wring their hands about not seeing their families in four or five days. But well, you know what? My daddy didn't see his family for four years. My Uncle Roy never got to see his family again. And we've, we've got to take control of this country, sir. There's no no other way. It's, it's, it is a, and everything, you know, and I, and I, I, I take a little, little um, displeasure when people say chaos. We follow the rules exactly as they are laid out in our Constitution. That's why there's no tanks that, in the well, street. The one rule, though, Congressman, that chafes now going forward, for some of your colleagues, I don't know if all, I don't know for you, is this idea that a single congressman can, can get the process going to remove a speaker. I would, I would wonder uh, if any of those considering the speaker job, and we hear about Congressman Scalise and Congressman Jordan, I don't know where your loyalties lie in that case, but that, 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 is, that provision is gonna go. What do you think of that? I, it's possible. You know, that was, that was on the book since, I believe, the 20s. That's right. And Speaker Pelosi actually took it out. That's right. So it served this country well. Um, you know, I had a lawyer tell me one time, good, brother, good fences make uh, good neighbors. And we need firm rules and laws in this country. And those are reasons there. That, that but it in is almost one all of those cases, vote. right, Congressman, you had enough of a cushion for either party 
to prevent the conundrum yeah. that Republicans are in now. So no matter how it goes, yeah. and again, I don't know who you're supporting, if you want to announce that, or you yourself are interested in the buzz, but aren't we going to be revisiting this again? I think we will, and we'll make a decision. And, and honestly, I mean, it's put in place. A lot of those rules are put in place so you can run home and say, look at this tough rule we got in place, but we never use it. And this just happened to be a chance to use it, and it was used well, I thought. All right. Does it bother you on the one side, your patriot, and you're, you, 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 you have been very true to what you believe in, and people can argue yes, that, but you've been consistent. But now uh, you find yourself having voted with seven other Republicans who all voted in lockstep with every single Democrat in the well, House. Does I, that bother you? No, it doesn't. I'd submit to you that those us eight Republicans, I would submit to you that the Democrats voted with us because we saw there was a problem. And, and honestly, I've been in the gym. I've been all over the Capitol. You think that was the reason? The Don't you think that they really saw this an opportunity for more mischief and more problems and more dramas like this? And, say, and they no, said, hell, oh, we'll play along. I, 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 why would they? They got pretty much everything they wanted all along. Mm. Um, and, you know, we haven't done one thing. Nothing's gone to the Senate. We can all get all puffed up and say all these great things we've done. But, you, you know, when we, we were negotiating the debt situation or the budget, I think we, we were going to reduce 1% of, of, of new growth or something, and that was hitting them hard. You know, I raised the speed limit in Tennessee, and I always give this example. I asked for 85, knowing that I would take 70. Now, you go over that. I mean, the art of negotiation is not you don't start out at your base. You start at your base plus, and then you come back to your base. That's what you do. And then, hmm. and you know, just to say I'm not going to meet with them, I think is ridiculous. I think that shows a poor choice in leadership, and I hope our new speaker will do just that. And Tuesday, we'll know Tuesday. And I suspect we'll have one vote on the floor, and we'll have a new speaker, and it'll be seamless. Will you be, when we get a chance to revisit avoiding another government shutdown, Will you be insistent on no Ukraine funding in that final piece of legislation? Absolutely. We've sent them over 114 plus billion dollars. We've uh, as Americans are over there. They'll tell you they're not. Americans under uniform. So if it has. Very I'm sorry, Congressman, but if it has that Go feature ahead. in it, uh, that's a no vote from you. That is a no vote for me. I don't want. We, it's not our war. You know, we can't even. We mustered up to give the poor people in Maui seven hundred dollars a family, and that they lost everything. We've given people from Afghanistan refugees millions and millions of dollars. People coming over our southern border, giving all this stuff. We got veterans living under bridges, and we're cranking out money to the second most corrupt nation in all of Europe. It's Europe's war. They need to fight it. They need to step up to the plate. American boys and girls don't need to be heading over there, and we don't need American dollars heading over there either. All right. We'll watch things very closely, Congressman. Very good having you on. Thank you, Mr. Cavuto. I'm not even going to make a pitch for, for fundraising like my friend Nancy <laughs> Mace did. We were ready to type something up on the bottom of the screen. Nah, uh, Congressman, we're good. very good seeing you. Uh, we'll see how it all sorts out. Hopefully, we'll sort out.